Uh, I'm going to make a, a presentation of my country, especially of my company, uh, that work, the tourism for people who need some kind of accessibility or have some health problem, etc. So, tourism for all. We are a Portuguese tour operator, also a travel agency. We're doing coming and also outgoing for people who need some kind of accessibility or have some physical problems, some health problems, visual impairments, etc. We, we also work medical and health tourism in Portugal. Myself work with people with disabilities since I was 16 years old, uh, for almost 34 years that I work with people with disabilities. Uh, 23 years ago, I was the, the founder, the main founder, not only myself, but with other colleagues and relatives uh, who have people with some kind of disability. We were the founders of, nowadays, since the last years, the major cooperative of social solidarity in Portugal. We are a non-profit organization. We have uh, continuing care units. It's like uh, hospitals, rear guard hospitals. We have homes for people with disabilities. We give support at houses of people, elder people, have some kind of physical problem, health problem, also people with disabilities, of course. We also have a rehabilitation clinic and also beauty clinics. Uh, we manage a spa from uh, the second biggest change of hotels in Portugal, uh, but only one spa of one hotel they have in Sintra near our facilities. We work with the main insurance companies and uh, we also provide all the support uh, to children at schools uh, and kindergartners, etc. Of course, people, uh, children who have some kind of uh, disability or uh, or mental problems. Also, our main goal and our, our mission is to provide high quality services for anyone who needs uh, accessibility or need equipment. Uh, of course, when they travel to Portugal or other countries that we work with, that I will explain later. Like I was saying, we work uh, mainly in Portugal, of course. Uh, we also do trips to Portugal and Spain, and, some kind, and sometimes we, we, we do um, tours for other countries because we have license uh, to transportation uh, from all, all, Europe, all Europe. We also work uh, Cape Verde, uh, then where I am right now uh, with my partner here from Morabi Tour. We have uh, a nine seats van here and uh, all the equipment. It's, it's summertime all year in this island of uh, North of Africa. And uh, that's the countries that uh, we work directly. My country, the first time that the World Tourism Organization created this award uh, in 2019, uh, the best world destination for people with disabilities, it was Portugal that won with the Portuguese beaches. We have hundreds of accessible beaches with, with chairs that uh, enter in the water and all kinds of facilities for people with some kind of disability. The country itself uh, went to several world destinations um, Awards, 2017, 18, and 19. Also, Best European Destination, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And also, the capital, Lisbon, also win uh, Best European uh, Award um, in 2018, and also the, the Best European City Break. So, as you could see, uh, Portugal is uh, well known and uh, and. Uh, get this, all, all these awards in Europe and also in the world because it's a, a nice tourist destination. Speaking uh, in, in more detail about uh, the work that we do uh, in accessible tourism, we have specialized transportation that we'll see later in the next slides. We have uh, give to the clients accessible accommodation in many hotels all, all over the country and also in the Islands, in the Soris and Madeira, of course. Uh, we have uh, staff that can give support 24 hours a day, if necessary, to our clients, medical auxiliary, therapist, nurse, 
wherever. We do, of course, visitors and tours, uh, all the daily care, if the client need, of course. Also, various activities with all the technical aids that the client needs. For example, we could put uh, an electrical bed in the hotel, hoist, all the equipment that the clients need. Uh, we do almost everything. It's, uh, uh, there's well, nothing that we can do, almost nothing, of course, that we cannot do in kinds of equipment and, and support to, to our clients. We also do some other kind of sports that is not very usual in this kind of tourism, like diving, or spec riding, uh, parasailing, etc., etc. We have uh, lots of possibilities, and we also do it with our with our client um, in the in Portugal, since children to to adults. Uh, this is some pictures uh, of the kind of work that uh, we do: rehabilitation, horse riding, daily care. You know, pictures say more than words. <laughs> Some examples of our chairs and beach, our equipment of support. We have one of the, the best museums in the world with the biggest collection of carriages, which also is prepared for uh, visual impairments. This is our facilities. Um, it's, it's our own facilities at the hospital that I said that we have. Sometimes it's usual clients that came uh, in the board, on board of cruise ships. Sometimes people get injured and uh, go to hospitals, etc. And they become to our own facilities. We manage all things uh, until they be repatriated to, to their countries. Some kinds of things that, uh, that we do. This is some pictures of those, some hotels that we work with, uh, which have good facilities, pools with ramps, rolling shower. This is our vehicles. Uh, we have since nine seats. Uh, sorry, last week we, <laughs> we bought another car with five seats that uh, the clients could rent. We have since five seat car with one wheelchair until 54 seats with 10 wheelchairs. We have vehicles with five, like I said, five, nine, 11, 16, 27, 33, and 54 seats since one wheelchair until 10 wheelchairs with many capacities. We have a big fleet, as you could see. This is one of our biggest bus. We have two, one that took 10 wheelchairs. And we have another one with eight wheelchairs. It is a 33 seats um, bus that take five wheelchairs. We have two Mercedes for VIP clients, one of 16 seats that take three wheelchairs, and then another one with eight seats that also take three wheelchairs. And the, the other van with nine seats that take four wheelchairs. It was this vans that work especially with the cruises because we have uh, usually small groups. It is some photos of our clients. The most famous one is, uh, as you could see, is uh, was Stephen Hawking. We made some tours with him in Lisbon. It is a comment of the team of Stephen Hawking. The comments. And that's our location. <laughs> I think everyone knows where it's Portugal, but never know. <laughs> it is our contact. Of course, you could take a look at our website. And that's my presentation. I hope it was making a good time, not to rush, not too slow. Uh, and I'm here at your disposal uh, for some kind of question that you want to ask me. Sure. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Yeah, to start, what's your website? So I can Thanks. drop it in the chat. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, it's easy. And I'm curious, so 
Your program, is it part of a municipal or state program or do you get funding from the government? Uh, no. We receive uh, funds from the government to work uh, in the homes of people, in, uh, in, the, in the continued care units, etc. Not in tourism is a private company that belongs to the non-profit organization that I told you. But it's a private company, like any other company, and we don't receive funds. We live with our clients. What kind of work does Portugal do around accessibility in general? You said the beaches have ramps and it's well known as an accessible location. Is that private, like private beaches, or is it more government sponsored? No, all public. And uh, all the services are for free. Super yeah. cool. Many people with uh, some kind of visibility could go on the beach, use the, the, the chair and other equipment uh, to go to the water, whatever, and uh, everything is free. What inspired that, that work? Where did the funding and the motivation come from for the government to do that? Our government, since the last governments, all of them, last right governments, the, uh, all of them have a commitment uh, since uh, more or less 15 years. A uh, great commitment to, to, to put Portugal with more accessibility in everywhere. We have a, a law that obliges uh, the, all the, the, the buildings, uh, to the new ones, of course, since 15 years, like I said, uh, to all, all of them have accessibilities. And the others who don't, who don't have it to transform and give him a date to, to transform the, the buildings and put them all accessible to people. Also in the streets, in the buildings, in the beaches, everywhere, the, the country is more and more accessible every day, which is great, of course, for everyone. That's amazing. I'm thinking about where the New York City Accessibility Meetup and thinking about ways that we can advance accessibility in New York. What do you think... What steps can we take to advance accessibility in New York City? I never been in New York. I was going to a fair, but because of the restrictions of the COVID, yeah. maybe I'll go next year, I hope. Uh, but some people that I know that, of course, they already have been in New York. Mm -hmm. they, they say uh, wonderful things about accessibility in the United States in general. But of course, mm -hmm. everywhere, also in Portugal, there are some companies, uh, and, uh, some public facilities that don't, don't have accessibility or, or it's not the best one. And of course, uh, by law, in Portugal, in the US, in everywhere, in my opinion, it must be by law that people must have the obligation to, to, to put everything accessible, of course. And the, the, the government have to exercise fiscalization if uh, the things mm. are going well or not. That's my opinion. And th that's mm -hmm. what we do in Portugal. Of course, not everything is perfect. And some kind, sometimes things don't, don't, don't work well, but uh, that's the way I think. Excellent. Yeah, Mark Lasser here in the chat made a really good point, which I think is accurate that the MTA, which is New York City's Transportation Authority, needs a lot of work. And Broadway, I'm assuming, Mark, you mean Broadway shows, musicals and events need a lot of work. And that's an area where we've actually showcased some practitioners on Broadway that are doing accessible shows, some of their programs for deaf audiences, but in general, and you hinted at this, there are companies and organizations and structures that are older. So they're like out of scope for new legislation. And that's a big problem. I've seen, if you go into some buildings you go in the bath, it's like a beautiful interior. And then you go into the bathroom, it looks like it's from like the 60s. And it yes. probably is because it costs tens of thousands of dollars to uh, refurbish a bathroom. And if you touch it, if you change anything, you have to make it 
wheelchair accessible and, and, and compliant with the ADA. So it's an interesting problem. And it sounds like it's a similar consideration in Portugal. And I'm not sure what to make of it, but I'm, I'm happy to hear that there's a commitment by the government to advance accessibility. That's super cool. And one other thing that made me think of that is there specific, you said there was specific legislation. There's laws in Portugal around accessibility. Is that fairly recent? Yes. 2006. Okay. From 15 yeah. years ago. We have, we have the same problems in Portugal, in monuments, etc. Uh, but sure. in most of places, we are very creative. We have portable mm -hmm. things, portable toilets, portable ramps. We try to look, look around and, uh, and be creative with, with those kinds of obstacles. Uh, but, of mm -hmm. course, not 100% because there are buildings mm -hmm. which are quite impossible to change because... Uh, all buildings, uh, some of them are world heritage, and uh, mm -hmm. it's quite complicated to, to do some improvements in the, those kinds of buildings in, yeah. moments, uh, in general. I would imagine, and correct me, that Portugal has a very large tourism industry. Does that impact the decision to pursue accessibility at a state level? Is the government thoughtful about tourism as a driver for accessibility? Yes. That's uh, awesome. The last two secretaries of state uh, for tourism, they were very committed with accessibility in tourism. Mm -hmm. Very commitment. They give uh, funds to, um, to city halls and, mm -hmm. and other public monuments and uh, also public companies, etc. They give specific funds to make things more accessible which, of course, uh, it was and is great. But they still do that. How does the legislation apply to digital accessibility? This is a personal interest of mine, but online accessibility. So website accessibility, application accessibility. We also have legislation for that, but uh, the fiscalization is not so good. And things yeah. are not so good with the, in the web, but there are less, less legislation also for that. Interesting. I love this idea of, of making tourism a driver for accessibility because accessibility is about inclusion and tourism is very much driven by inclusion and being welcoming and inviting. So I think maybe that's one answer for New York City is how do we make a welcoming environment? Unfortunately, travel restrictions make it a lot harder, but I, I look forward to seeing tourism as a driver as we move through travel restrictions and health concerns in New York City. I really love that framework. And uh, everything, I, every person that I know, uh, they complain about that. that's the... Yeah really the main problem it's really the main problem yeah there's a one, one of the things that i see is that the main problem is the transportation especially in aviation uh, that's the main problem mm. for people who wants to travel and uh, everything i every person that i know uh, they complain about that that's the yeah really the main problem it's really the main problem there's uh really unfortunate case recently tragic case of an accessibility and disability advocate passing away sort of as a indirect result of the airline damaging her wheelchair so it's Absolutely. such a fundamental issue to travel and it's yeah it's distressing so one other question from the uh the chat how about accessible booking? How does someone who's blind or who's deaf work with you to book travel? I use blind and deaf specifically because those are obstacles that may impact communication. Yes, that's our main challenge uh, because we don't have many places in Portugal uh, 
that we don't have such a huge offer like we have for people in the wheelchair, for example. But we have some kind of monuments like the photo that I, I show you and the military museum in Lisbon and, and other monuments that people can touch on the... It's forbidden for everyone except uh, people with some uh, in visual impairment and they can yeah. touch things, uh, which, which is nice. Uh, we also have makets of the monuments. Uh, we have menus in Braille. Uh, mm. in some languages. We have some restaurants, some hotels that are prepared for blind people and deaf people. Uh, the offer is quite less than for people in wheelchair, of course. But we have such kind of offer and we organize trips according to the impairment that people, that clients have. Mm -hmm. Some people for so to travel with oxygen needs, for example. It's... Uh, not very usual, but sometimes happens. Or we also provide that. Uh, hmm. We try to provide everything. Uh, we, we provide almost everything. It's possible yeah. to travel if you do dialysis, for example. You could do dialysis during the day. You could do dialysis at night, for example, between 8 sure. p.m. and 12 p.m. and don't close the tours during the day. Almost everything is possible with us because, like I told you, we work with people with disabilities for many years. We have also mm -hmm. hospital facilities. We have doctors, nurses. We have our own staff. Uh, in our organization, uh, we work 240 people. Um, so oh. we are a big team in, in all the organization, of course. In tourism, we are uh, a team of six. But uh, we provide almost everything, and they all, we also have partnerships with hospitals and the health center in general. That's great, and I'm really happy to hear that about that commitment. What about if I wanted to actually, let's say I'm blind, or and I want to actually book travel with you? What's is the website? Do you have a similar commitment to digital accessibility? Can I go on the website and actually book travel with you? What's the best way to reach you if I'm if I'm using a screen reader or if I'm using other assistive technologies? Yeah, we must make some improvements in our website. But uh, in that example, uh, the best way is to call us or send us an email. Uh, it's the best way to to, to contact us. Okay. And we speak Good. with the client, see what the client wants to need. If right. he wants to go to go to some monuments, he wants to, to dive, he wants to go to the beach, to have some okay. sensorial experiences in the wine museum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I know that commitment that you're describing to digital accessibility, the, the at least the desire to improve will be well received by the blind community and people with motor impairments being able to use your digital content. So I, I, I support that. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the chat? We, I'm just so happy that you joined us today, Jose. And, and I said in the chat earlier, I'm ready to book my flight because it sounds <laughs> like Portugal is just like a, a beautiful place and the commitment to accessibility and inclusion extends to all of us. Being inclusive does not is not limited to people with disabilities. It's an expansive quality that I think signals a really positive aspect of the Portuguese culture and Portugal's infrastructure and commitment to accessibility. So that's super cool. There's one other question. Oh, someone missed the first few minutes. They're asking about other locales. If the travel is limited to Portugal. Remind us where else you, where else do you operate? We operate in all country. In all country. Okay. And also you usually do trips, Portugal and Spain also. And okay. sometimes we also go more to North and to France, uh, Belgium, etc. But uh, usually Portugal, of course, old country. Mostly Portugal. And sometimes Portugal and Spain. To that point, do you know of other companies that are doing similar work in other parts of the world? Do you have partner companies in, I don't know, Thailand? 
Yes, uh, I know lots of companies that uh, in many countries in the world do similar things that mm. we do. And um, yeah. one of the things that I have lots of proud, uh, sorry to say that, don't misunderstand me, but uh, many people uh, who work this kind of tourism for more years than us, they give us uh, the congratulations because we have a very complete service. Because... Mm. Most of companies, they have transportation, um, they, of course, they, they, they have the tours, the, the, the hotels, etc. But they don't, don't have the, all things that we have. And some, sometimes they don't have the transportation, they have the transportation of uh, another company, they have the, mm -hmm. the, the guide, etc. But uh, we have our own transportation, we have our own equipment, we have hospital facilities, we have the staff, we have the equipment, we have everything, which is best for the clients, is easier for us. We don't depend of other companies, which is not bad, of course, but it allows us to organize better things and give a faster answer to the client. And um, usually companies don't have everything like we have mm -hmm. and uh, that's one of the things that we have lots of pride is on that because uh, we have almost everything we work with many companies in all world that had uh, services like we have in portugal also in thailand <laughs> i'll do some research and find out what we have in new york city i imagine we have something like that and in new york um, i don't know in new york yeah I don't know. so uh, that's my homework california but not not in yeah. new york <laughs> new york is is difficult again because of the older infrastructure and it's just very dense things are much more compact so in particular for wheelchair users it can be challenging not okay. it's not easy I don't want to discourage anyone from coming to new york i think the the commitment and the welcome there's such an abundance of generosity I find in New Yorkers. People have a stereotype about New Yorkers as being edgy or like unwelcoming. And I find that is entirely untrue. I feel that in general, New Yorkers will help you when you need it. That, <laughs> that can be a problem too, in general, if you don't want help, but that's not the kind of help. Being in welcoming and inclusive. If you're not in New York, this is the New York City Accessibility Meet. Come to New York and then go to Portugal, Portugal and, and yeah. enjoy. Next year, uh, I will. Maybe in May, June. Yeah. I June. Think. June is better. Early June. Yes. <laughs> I, I... Thank you, Jose. And thank, thank you, you Tourism for, for All. Yeah. Visit tourismforall.com. And, and I want to say thank you again to our captioners, to Equal Entry, Adobe, Fable Technology, and Google for being generous sponsors of our event. Thank you to everyone for joining. Thank you, me. And, uh, and that's a wrap. Take care.